And this is where we get into behavioral styles. This is a tool that I've used for many, many years as we talk about communication to understand that communication isn't just acting a certain way. Because you can communicate in a certain way and that's going to work with one person, but it's not going to work with somebody else because everybody's got different styles. So I have a definition for effective communication. My definition is simply this. The effectiveness of your communication is measured by the response you get. The effectiveness of your communication is measured by the response you get. That means that sometimes we have people that are a challenge to us. As I asked at the very beginning, I said, you probably have some customers you get along with really well. Everybody says, yeah. And then you have those other customers that are difficult. Yeah. Okay? And, and it's a challenge. How do we become effective communicators with those difficult people, the ones that we don't quite connect with that well? Well, challenge yourself. Learn to get better with those difficult people. When we talk about DISC, okay, we're talking about these four primary styles. Okay, the D stands for dominant style. The D is driver. And this, by the way, D and C are task-oriented people. I and S are people-oriented. These people go by feelings quite a lot. These people generally don't. They're just like, give me the facts. This, this person is a multitasker. And they're just speeding through a lot of things, not going to a lot of detail in anything. These people want to drill down to the detail. These are the analyzers. We call it compliance style because they follow the rules. They're process oriented. They're usually very technical and they want to follow process and do it right. They're focused on doing things right. Very anal analytical, but not very personable unless they've really worked on their people skills. So the biggest challenge in terms of interacting with people are the people on this side because if they haven't really worked at developing their people skills, they may have some work to do. So I is influence style. These are the salespeople. These are the people that are very good at influencing other people. First of all, they're socializers, so they connect with people very well. They have a degree of confidence in social situations. They're outgoing. They're fun. They have a positive sense of humor. If you're planning a, a, a holiday party, they want to get involved. Let's make it fun. They love to have fun. They're fun to be around. OK, influence style. Where does this come from? They're very good at when they're talking to somebody, being able to influence their point of view, the way they think, their decision making. That's why they make good salespeople. They can influence buying decisions. They're very creative. They're kind of holistic thinkers. That these people are not at all, okay? These people are very linear in their thinking. Things are, have to be a certain way and so forth. These people are much more flexible. So it's the opposite. They're, yes, very opposite, yeah. Okay, so the S stands for supportive style. These are people who really care about customers. They want to give support. That's where the S stands for. They want to help. They want to do a good job. They're, they're really, from a professional point of view, they pride themselves on really doing a good job, especially in this role of being able to help other people and do a good job for them. And, and that's really key in customer support. But see, with, with every one of these styles, there always comes with it some of the difficult um, trends or, or, or um, features or, or tendencies. So I'll tell you what some of them are. These people tend to blow other people away because they're insensitive to the feelings of other people. They have an agenda. They get very focused on their agenda. So if they're talking to somebody, they want to do all the talking. And it's just tell them like it is. And they want to just go right to the throat, you know, right to the heart of the thing, get right to the bottom line, very direct. Well, that, that could be a good thing in some situations. Sometimes it's not. And because they talk a lot, they tend not to listen. So that's a problem. These people need to work on their listening skills and their sensitivity to other people. OK, so what these, these people here, what do they need to work on? They need to work on their organization skills, their follow through. They can, you know, they can kind of chase rabbits sometimes, you know, and they start this and they start this and they forget, oh, yeah, I need to do that. So they need more structure. And yeah, they're very positive, but if they get in a very negative and difficult situation, sometimes they get overwhelmed with the negativity and they have a hard time maintaining that positive attitude. So they try to be around positive people. But the problem with customer service is you can't always do that. You've got to deal with the negative situations. But they, on the other hand, I could say they've got a great sense of humor and they're really good at lightening people up. Okay? Um, S's, 
uh, so again, I mentioned you know some of the some of the things that they need to work on is it being more direct, um, being able to deal with confrontation and so forth, where their tendency is to avoid conflict, to be able to go straight into it, to to be able to communicate directly what you really feel instead of sugarcoating it, and to not hold grudges, to work it out. Sometimes they have a problem with somebody, they just hold that as an attitude and that they don't go fix it. So they need to work on that. They need to sometimes speak up more. They need to be more outgoing. There are times when, when it's required for them to, to say something that's unpopular, but it needs to be said. They tend to hesitate. So when we have a class, the people who don't talk, the people who don't share, the people who just sit there and don't say a word, eh, it's going to be generally going to be people from this rank here and maybe some of the people over here, but mostly the people here, because they're, you know, I don't know that I want to speak up. Uh, the, other, the other thing is the extroverts who are taking over and doing all the talking, they want to wait for almost like an invitation. And they're not going to get an invitation. So a lot of times in one-on-one -on -one situations, they feel like this person has cut them off, or this person has taken over, and they could resent them for taking up all the space in the room, but they've got to learn how to jump in and take some of that space themselves. They tend to hesitate in those situations. And then these people I mentioned, they tend to be um, judgmental and argumentative and a lot of times not the team player that they need to be, a little more flexible because everything has to be done a certain way and sometimes they need more flexibility. So I mean that's just sort of a thumbnail sketch of some of the things that go along with these that whatever style you are, you have things to work on. But most importantly, what's most importantly is that in any given interaction with a customer, you realize that sometimes your style is working against you. And a thing that might come and be the natural thing for you to say at a given time may be the wrong thing because it's coming from your style. It's not coming from what really needs to be said. So you have to take an extra effort to really tune in and be more situational so that your style is not directing you all the time because sometimes it's going to lead you in the wrong direction. <laughs>